talk about the WTM 4000 family of radios. In particular, we're going to cover the WTM 4100, WTM 4200, and WTM 4500. WTM 4100 is a dual core modem with a single transceiver and power amplifier. It covers 6 to 42 gigahertz, and in a single carrier we can deliver up to 700 megabits of throughput, and dual carrier mode at 1.4 gigabits aggregate throughput. Now, the reason why you'd use the WTM 4100 is if your license happens to have both of your channels on the same polarization, meaning they both have to be on vertical, they both have to be on horizontal. When you turn on both carriers in the modem, we're going to have a reduction in transmit power by 5 dB. This gives us the maximum transmit capacity to the radio at a slightly reduced TX power and system gain. During a fade while operating WTM 4100, the radio will detect fading conditions and shut off the second carrier, thus applying the transmit power to the first carrier, giving us an additional 5 dB of transmit power. This will keep the link up and stable during fading conditions. When the fade goes away, the radio will automatically detect that, turn on our second carrier, and then allow us to run at maximum capacity of the link. WTM 4200 is a dual modem, dual carrier with two transceivers inside this radio. This allows us to operate dual channels on both vertical and horizontal polarizations at the same time. In a single channel, we can deliver up to 700 megabits of capacity in dual channel mode, 1.4 gigabits total aggregate capacity. There's no reduction in transmit power on either polarizations when running the WTM 4200 platform. It comes in frequency bands from 6 through 42 gigahertz. Again, operates on both polarities at the same time. The WTM 4500 is a dual core modem, single transceiver, with secondary receiver for space diverse configurations. WTM 4500 is available only at 6 GHz and 11 GHz, and again has integrated space diverse antenna receivers. Typically use space diversity when we're going to do a shot that's a long distance over very flat terrain, like the desert, or over water where you have a highly reflective surface and a lot of multipath interference. Space diversity having that secondary antenna allows for higher link availability and more reliability across the path. With our dual core modem on WTM 4500, we're able to send in a single carrier 700 megabits or in dual carrier 1.4 gigabits total link capacity. WTM 4000 has many interface ports. We'll start with the first one. This is our DC power port. We can power the radio from 24 to 48 volts DC through this interface port here. The next one is our gigabit copper interface port. In addition, we can do PoE to power the radio over this interface. The next port here is another copper gigabit interface port, but this is for data only. The last two are SFP cages on the radio. These two ports are designed to have a fiber connection and we can put in one gigabit, 2.5 gigabit or 10 gigabit SFPs into these to pass data into the radio. All of these ports are tied together internally with a 50 gigabit non-blocking carrier grade ethernet switch. That allows us a lot of flexibility in how we interface with the radio. For example, we could put our payload on the two 10 gigabit SFP ports and then have the one gigabit copper port for our out-of-band management. These two ports on the top are our interconnect ports. These are used to connect multiple WTM radios together, either in an XPIC configuration or for a MIMO configuration. This port down here has a USB interface and it's used for multiple purposes. The first one is to back up the configuration of the radio. Once you've logged into the radio, got everything set the way you like, you can plug in a USB flash drive and back up the config. That makes it easy in the future if you need to swap out a radio, you put the spare in, plug in your USB drive do a restore and your system is up and running again. Secondarily under here we have two test probe ports and those test probe ports are for the install technician up on the tower to plug in his digital voltmeter to read out signal strength. This is the traditional way of doing an antenna alignment. In addition underneath here the USB port can be used to, for a Wi-Fi dongle and in this case you can use your smartphone or your laptop to gain access to the user interface of the radio. Again, this makes it easy for the technician up on the tower to get out his smartphone and he can look at a signal strength reading to help him align the antennas. And on the opposite side of the radio is the RF interface port. 
This is designed to be a direct attach from the radio to the back of the antenna. In the case where you have an existing antenna that doesn't have the same physical interface, we can use our remote mount kit and attach the WTM radio to the back of an existing dish. For more information, visit our website at aviatnetworks.com or visit us on social media on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook.